What in the world is that? What? Where? Over there. Don't you see it? No, I, I don't see it. It's over by that thing. I, I still don't see it. Oh, now it's gone. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Real Robots. I'm Will. Welcome to episode four, where we continue building the drink dispensing droid. If you remember on the last episode, I said this episode was going to be about... On the next episode, I want to recap what we've done up to this point in greater detail. So if you hadn't guessed yet, this episode is all about the arms. So when I originally started this project, I hadn't quite figured out exactly how I was going to do the arms. I knew I wanted them thin to kind of look like K2SO arms, but in doing that, I didn't realize how difficult it was going to be to try to figure out exactly how to fit all the mechanics inside that very small space. It took me a couple of weeks to try to figure out how to get things in there, but I ended up using the same servos that we use in other parts of the body to fit within the small space that I had. The concept behind the arms are pretty simple. The left arm is going to be the one that always grabs the cup, and the right arm will have a silicone tube that comes out of the chest that goes into the finger of the right hand, and then that dispenses the liquid into the cup. And that brings me to this. So you've seen this cup before, right? This is the Solo Cup, the famous Solo Cup that you see at every single party. The hand was actually designed to fit this cup. So I took this uh, curve, incorporated it into the palm, so that way we'd always be able to pick this cup up for sure. So later, if we decide to have a party with the robot, we know that this cup will fit his hand and he'll be able to dispense liquid out for all the guests. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Let's start by looking at the computer designs. I'm going to start assembling the top of the arm first. And here you can see I'm using the same motor that I used to rotate the waist. And here I'm using the same servo that I used to move the head back and forth to rotate the bottom part of the arm. Attached to this servo will be a D-shaft that will go down through a pillow block and then that will connect onto the lower arm and allow the arm to rotate in and out. Now it's time to finish off the 3D printed parts. You know the drill, filling, sanding, painting. Now we're moving on to the elbow. So the elbow is composed of uh, a single servo, the 60 centimeters per kilogram servo I've been using for the uh, head and neck. Hopefully it's strong enough to be able to lift the um, lower arm. 
Um, but basically it's attached by its frame to the D shaft that's coming from the top and then attached to the forearm. Next, we're moving on to the servo that rotates the wrist. It's basically a servo connected by a D shaft through another pillow block to the wrist and rotates the wrist around. This is the hand that's actually going to be holding on to the cup so all three fingers function on this one for the fingers i just ended up with some push rods that uh, push forward from the servos and uh, bend the finger at the first joint This is the right hand. This is the one that will end up dispensing the liquid into your cup. Basically, we're gonna have a tube that comes down out of his chest, down his arm, and in through his hand, and the liquid will come out one of his fingers. I wanted the wrist to have a lot of motion because I knew they had to perform certain tasks and they needed to be in certain positions. So there's two servos for the wrist, one for uh, up and down and one for left and right, which gives it a lot of motion.
Well, here they are through the magic of editing, seven weeks of work and the arms are complete. These arms were actually a lot more challenging than I thought they were gonna be. So let's get them attached to the body and hook them up. Let's get to it. Now we have all the servo wires coming in from the arm and we can attach them here, which is a breakout board that I have for uh, 7.4 volts for the, all the servos. It takes the load off of the EZB, which is our controller, by giving it each motor its own separate voltage. And then we're just controlling it through signal wire that goes back to the EZB, it sends out a signal to the servos to tell the servos what position it needs to be in. I don't think I've covered this yet, but originally when we did the first video, I said that I was going to uh, try to run the whole robot off of uh, 12 volts. That changed pretty quickly. I now have two power supplies, one uh, 24 volts, which is supplying the waist rotation servo and the, both the shoulder servos. They will run on 24 volts and we want the maximum amount of current going to it. The rest of the robot runs on 7.4 volts, two power supplies, double the power, Double the fun. So just as a reminder, I said earlier in one of the episodes that I'm using Arc software by Synthium, and this software works in conjunction with the EZB, and that allows me to build up animations, which is what we're gonna do with the arms. The first thing I'd like to do in Arc is to assign the digital port from the EZB into the software. Once the Arc software has that data, then you can start controlling each of the servos. I can use a multitude of different things to move the servos. What I normally do is map them all out with just sliders first, and then eventually I'll connect it to something called touchpad, which allows you to just use your finger on your touchpad or a mouse to slide the motions back and forth. A lot of people ask me, how do you get such smooth motions? This is one of the reasons, and this is the, one of the capabilities that Arc has. So the next thing I'd like to do is open up Servo Recorder. Servo Recorder is a very powerful tool within Arc that allows you to record motions as they're happening in real time. What I do is layer them on top of each other. You can take each one of those motions and build them up and stack them on top of each other. And then eventually you end up with an entire animation. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. This was a super long video and a super long build. I'm glad it's over with. I'm pleased with the way everything turned out, but I certainly am looking forward to the next episode, which we're going to start working on the onboard computer and the touchscreen so we can cut the cord from the external laptop that we have and the robot will be all self-contained. So be sure you check out that episode. If you'd like to support me, be sure to subscribe, hit that like and notification bell, and you can also support me on Patreon. Links are in the description below. See you next time. See if they work. I'm going to...